In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the difference between frictional absorbers and resonant absorbers. By the time we're done, you're going to know the difference and which one you need for your space. My name is Michael Carrillo, aka Hexspa. Welcome to my channel. Here, I release original music and music making tutorials. So if you're new, click subscribe. First, let's start with frictional absorbers. These are typically known as broadband bass traps, and this is what you see behind me. How they work is on the velocity part of a wave. That's the quarter wavelength. So if you have a room that's eight feet high, that's gonna be at two feet and six feet, your quarter wavelengths, okay? Not half and not whole, but the in-between ones. And how they work is you can think of the air particles as a whole bunch of soldiers in a platoon rushing through a plane. And what the absorber does is acts like a bunch of trees to slow them down. It works on a wide range of frequencies. So pretty much when you're in a room, you're looking to treat the bass below the shorter frequency and you can look that up using the AMROC calculator, but broadband bass traps are gonna be the best solution for most rooms because most rooms have problems over a wide range of frequencies. And that leads us to resonant absorbers, which a lot of people get into when they're starting to treat their room because they know they have problems in the sub range, 50 Hertz and below. So they think they need to treat it, which is false. According to the European Broadcasting Union, for critical listening rooms, you don't need to worry about the decay of 50 hertz and below as much as you do from 50 hertz up to your shorter frequency or beyond. Beyond that, everything's easier to treat, but your base range is really where everyone has trouble. So people start getting into this, and there's several types. There's diaphragmatic absorbers, and there's Helmholtz resonators. Diaphragmatic absorbers work because there's a membrane which accepts the wave's pressure, which again is at half or the entire wavelength, and then it converts that into velocity, which behind, inside the cavity, is another frictional absorber. So really they're like a modified broadband absorber. And then Helmholtz resonators are like a Coke bottle in that there's air sitting in the hole, which acts like a weight. And then inside the Coke bottle, you have air which acts like a spring. So the sound pressure pushes on that plug, the air inside compresses, and then wants to push that air back out. So you get a spring effect. And then based on the size of the cavity is the tuning of that resonator. Now you can see that both of these need to be tuned and they only work in a narrow queue. So to treat your entire bass range from 300 hertz down, you would need a whole lot of them. It's not practical. They're big and they have a slower response than velocity absorbers. So again, a lot of people get into these because below 50 hertz, they think they need to target these ranges. It's just false. You need thick treatment. You can use rigid absorption in anywhere up to eight inch thickness, or you can use pink fluffy absorption, just the stuff you'd buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, from eight inches as thick as you can manage. If you really wanted to treat your sub range with frictional absorbers, you would use six feet of of treatment. But again, you don't need that much because even a thinner absorber will do the job. So in summary, you have a lot of frequency issues in your room in the base range. So you want to use frictional absorbers, also known as broadband treatment, to take care of it. You do not need to worry about your super sub ranges decay. And as a consequence, 
you don't need to use resonant absorbers, okay? So I hope this video is helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions, and go to hexpa.com to get my music for free. Thank you. Mm -hmm.